Hello, and welcome to this film, which is about titrations. It's the last of the practical films in the acids and bases topic, so um, should know by now how to use a volumetric pipette and a burette. We should know how to make a standard solution. We're now going to get these solutions to react together um, in a reaction where there's some kind of visible sign of when we have um, added the reactants together in the stoichiometric ratio. And as you probably know by now, we're going to use an indicator to provide this visual sign. Okay, and as usual, we're going to pay attention to things that we might do in order to get accurate results. Okay, so let's start off um, by looking at what we mean by a rough titration. Uh, this is one that you may well not do. Um, but I would suggest it's probably quite a good idea to do it because it makes the subsequent titrations um, a bit quicker, really. So let's have a look at one of these. Okay, so here's our flask um, with the aliquot in. This is actually sodium carbonate. We're using methyl orange as our indicator, where there's other indicators we could use, but we're just going to add a few drops of indicator, whichever indicator it is we're using. We don't need more than a few drops. Give the flask a bit of a swirl so that everything's well mixed and we'll pop that underneath our burette. Now um, we obviously want to check what our initial reading is and we also want to make sure that our funnel isn't in the top of the burette. So now we're going to start adding the liquid about a mil or two at a time. We're not trying to be very accurate, we're not trying to hit the end point exactly, we're just trying to get a rough idea of how much liquid is needed to get the reaction finished. Okay, so as we get close to the end point, I'm just showing you the colors here. Not trying to be very accurate about it, just trying to get a rough idea of how much liquid is going to be needed. So if we're going to have some idea, obviously we need to just check the final reading and we're done. Now once you've got some uh, results from a rough titration, it's time to do some accurate titrations. So in other words, you're going to uh, we're going to do a titration to try and get a volume that is uh, correct to within uh, 0 0.05 of a millimetre, millilitre if possible. So we're going to go for two decimal places on our burette, although our last decimal place is only ever probably going to be a 0 or a 5 because you can't really see well enough to, to do it more accurately than that. Right, so first we're going to empty out our flask from the last titration. We're then going to give that a good rinse with distilled water. We don't have to dry it out afterwards because the distilled water is not going to react with anything, so it doesn't matter how much is in the flask. Might just top up our burette if we think we haven't got enough liquid in there for another titration. Um, but once we've finished doing that, of course, we're going to remember to take our funnel out the top because we don't want drops falling in. We're going to note our initial reading nice and accurately this time, add a few drops of indicator and we can start titrating. Now the nice thing is if we've done a rough titration is that we know that we can add quite a lot of liquid straight away without worrying that we're going to overshoot the mark. So um, we go to maybe a mil or two less than we know we can safely use and then we can save us, well we've saved ourselves a lot of time because this next part really wants to go as slowly as it possibly can. We're going to open the tap up so that we've got a drip coming from our burette, but slow enough so that we can catch it between drips. So in other words, if one of my drips causes the liquid to change colour, then I know I can shut the tap in time and see how much liquid I've taken from my burette really quite accurately. So once we see a permanent colour change, we're just going to note our final reading and then we're done, we've carried out an accurate titration. Now obtaining consistent results, um, well I suppose it's a matter of, um, well first of all making sure that your drops close to the end point are coming out pretty slowly so you don't overshoot the end point. Um, but I suppose the, the main purpose of this slide is really to highlight what we mean by the term consistent in this context. And we're looking for results that match to within 0.2 of a milliliter. Now, that's quite quite an important sort of fact to remember, really, because if you're asked to 
um, to analyze some data in an exam, then you should be ignoring any data that is um, that varies by more than that amount. Okay, so if we look at some uh, titration data, you will have seen these in the previous film where we worked them out. Um, uh, we've collected some final volumes and some initial volumes from our burette, and we've got some titers. Okay, and we can see there's our rough titration result, which we usually ignore, and then we've got two results here, um, which match to within 0.2. Our third result didn't, so we're going to treat that as anomalous, and this one matches those two. So when it comes to averaging our titers, as we've said before, we're going to use those three results. Okay, well, that's it now. That's it for all the practical films. You know how to carry out a titration. As I've said before, um, these um, practical skills do come in handy in the redox topic as well, except um, you'll be carrying it. You'll be using different reactions and different indicators, um, but the principles remain the same. Um, you may have some questions about these practicals, in which case, please do feel free to come and ask if you've spotted any mistakes on the films. Um, it would be great if you could let me know or if you could comment on the YouTubes um, just so that other people aren't misled by them. Um, but anyway, good luck with your practicals.